Walker is my name and I am the same, Ridley Walker. Walking my riddles wherever they've took me and walking them now on this paper the same. I don't think it makes no difference where you start the telling of a thing. You never know where it's begun, really. No more than you know where you've begun your own self. You might know the place and day and time of day when you've been birthed. You might even know the place and day and time when you've been got. That don't mean nothing, though. You still don't know where you've begun. I've already wrote down about my naming day. It won't. It weren't no more than three days after that. My dad got killed in a digging at Witter's Dump, and I were the loan of my name. Dad and me, we just come off forage Rota and back on jobbing that day. The whole we've been working, we've been on it 24 days, which I've never liked it 12. It's a judged men number in it, and this been two of them. We'd per near cleared out down the chalk and heavy mucking it been. Nothing left in the hole, only sorted it through muck and the smell of it, and some girt big rotting iron thing, some kind of machine, it were, you couldn't tell what it were. Till then, anything big, we always busted up in the hole. Winch, a girt big buster, rock up on the crane, and drop it down on whatever we were busting. Finish up with hand hammers, then we drag the pieces to the ready for the melting. This time, though, the first man told us word come down they didn't want this thing busted up. We were to get it out intact. So we've been struggling with the girt big thing, nor the wool twenty of us couldn't shift it. We couldn't even lift it, just that little bit, to get the sling underneath of it. Up to our knees in muck we were, even with the drain we dug, the hole were murky from the rains and coal. It were only just the second mooning of the year, and winter long and going. We got heavy poles and levering it up just enough to keep a rope round one end of it. We had in mind to shift that girt thing just a little with the crane so we could get it proper slung, then winch it out of there. It were a 16-man treadle crane with two weans men inside, four men outside each, each wean. Usually, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't been on the crane, we always put our heaviest on them wheels. All we had though were twenty in all, and we needed some muscle on them lever poles, so I were up there on the leaf hand wheel with our hardest heavy Fister Crunchman. We were the front two on that wheel. Durster Potter and Jobber Easting behind us. Straighter Empty, our big man, he were down in the hole with Dad and two others. Us on the outside of the wheels, looking towards the hole, and them on the inside, looking away from it. We took up the slack, then, straight or empty, gave the sign, and Chalker Marchmen, the Witter's Dump first men, chanting us on. Gone tomorrow, here today, pick it up and walk away. Don't you know grief and woe, pick it up, it's time to go. Grief and woe, don't you know? Pick it up, it's time to go. Round we gone with the rope winching in and the A-frame taking the strain. Straighter empty and skyway mortars leaving the girt thing. Whist we winch and dad and Leister Digman working the sling under. London town is drowned this day. Hear me say, walk away. Sling your bundle, turn and go, parments in the mud, you know. Grief and woe, don't you know? Pick it up, it's time to go. Wheels creaking, stoppers knocking, 32 legs going. The rope gone iron hard and the girt big thing coming up on the muck, all black and rotten under the gray sky. A crow going over and it had the right of us. Dad and me looking up at the crow. I know it that crow were going to say something under that gray sky. I know it that crow were going to tell. The crow yelled, Foul! 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 I don't know if I were falling before he said that or not. The treadles were wet and slippy, but I had a good grip on the railing anyhow I thought I did. 
But there I were with my feet going out from under me and nothing in my hand. Falling I were, I knocked Durster Potter and Jobber Easting loose and they grab at me, they didn't have nothing else to hold on to. Fister Crunchman cut my arm, only the railing he had hold of it with his other hand come away in his hand and off he gone with the rest of us. I could see in my mind how funny it must have looked. I were near laughing with it only, I seen that wheel going backwards. And I heard something tear loose. It were the stoppers, two on each wheel, all four gone, wanging off. Both wheels screech it, and the four blokes on the outside of the other wheel shot off towards the hole like stones out of a sling. Well, it were the loud, the load took charge, and sploosh! Down it come, that girt big thing, and made a giant splash, and big muck going up slow and high in the air. That girt old black machine fell back into the muck with my dad underneath of it. It all happened so fast, the crow were still in sight. He larfed then, ha, 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 and off he flapped it. We picked ourselves up then, all but one of us. The rope was still fast to that girt big thing. We all got on that rope. Then we didn't use the wheel winch, only the A-frame and the pulleys. Chalker Marchman chanted us up on the straight pole. Heard it in news of ten. Sling your bundle, haul again. Haul again and hump your load. Everybody's on the road. We shifted the thing and got Dad out from under it. Probably it killed him soon as it come down on him. He didn't have no time to drown in the muck. He were all smashed up. You couldn't tell whose face it been. It must have been anybody's. I begun to climb all over that thing then, that girt big black thing. I were looking to see if it had a name stamped on it or raised up in the iron of it like them things do sometimes. It had a shell of old muck stone hard under the new muck, though, nor I couldn't find no name. Everyone were saying, what is it really? What are you doing? I said, my dad been killed by something I don't even know the name of. That a larf? I begun larfing that I couldn't stop. They let me have my larfing out, but I was still wanting something, some kind of last word, some kind of on with. If I weren't going to get it from dad, at least I wanted something for on with. Even if it weren't nothing, only the name of that girt black thing. What smash him flat so you couldn't even tell whose face it been. I said that to first your crunchman. He said, You look at your dad's face, Ridley, that's what Witter's Dump done to him, there's your on with. I said, And weren't Witter's Dump done it to him? It were me. I lost my footing and I pull you with me. I pull you with me. It were me made the wool of us lose our purchase, Fister said. That load were too much for that wheel. It weren't us falling, kill your dad. It were the stoppers coming loose, and the wheel took charge. Straighter Empey said, Fister's right. It were too much of a load for that wheel. Chalker Marchman said to Straighter, It were you lot put it on the wheel. All I told you were to get the thing out of the hole. You could have dragged it, couldn't you? I never give you to do it for the wheel. Anyhow, that wheel would have been all right if you would have had enough heaviness on it and kept your heaviness where it been meant to be. Strader said, Witter's Jumple give compensation for Brood of Walker, though you will do that much, won't you? Chucker Marchman said, Oh, yes, we'll send Reckman Bess up with it, whole road back to fence with you. We borrowed her drag to take Dad home, going back to fence, then all of us. They give us full day's meat at Witter's Dump. And Reckman Bessop, he were their connection man, he brung the comping station. That we call it Dead Man's Iron, and he carried it on his back. We were going out through the gate, when there gone up behind it, behind us, the death wail, loud and strong. It must have been forty people at least. All them voices going up black and sharp and falling away in a groan. Aye! I said to Reckman Bessop, 
That can't be for my dad. He weren't nothing to them. He said, It's a baby dead birthed. That that babby come into the world dead, same time as your dad gone with auntie. I said, Is there a connection? He said, Not one as I will make. Going back slow then, there come dogs following on our track. We hadn't seen none that day till then. Shappet black is how I think of them, though most of them are patchy color. It's the high leggedness of them. Their thick necks and little heads and little ears. It were the Bentars pack, with their black and red spotted leader. All of them head down and slumping on behind us, just out of bow shot. I were looking at the leader and waiting for something I could feel it in my throat. He didn't have his head down, he had it up and looking towards us. There had begun to be some rowling and yipping and yapping from the other dogs, then crowning leader and him turning. Grueling and smarling he were, but the others crowded on him. Then the leader he come running towards us. The other dogs didn't fall or they hung back and he come on some. All of us stopped then and looking at the dog. Not one of us put our to string. We all know it were that kind of thing. I stepped out a little way from the others, and they all moved it away from me, and it were like something you do in a dream. Straighter Empey said, Ridley, he's offering and he's favoring to you. I stood there and holding ready with my spear. Nothing like it never happened before, but it were like it ways been there happening. The dog getting bigger, bigger under the gray sky, and me waiting with the spear. It didn't seem like the running brung him on, though he were moving fast. It were more like he'd been running forever in one place, not moving on, just getting bigger, bigger, till he were big enough to be in front of me, with his face all wrinkled back from his teeth. Just in that fraction of a minute, the dog's face and the boar's face from my naming day. They flickered together, my dad's face all smashed. I held the spear and he ran onto it, lying there and kicking with his yellow eyes on me, and I finished him with my knife. Straighter Empey said, Look how his teeth wore down, and he all gurzled. An old leader come to his time, and crowded out come back to us die. I've heard of it but I've never seen it before. It's luck to you, Ridley. We laid the dog across dog's, Dad's legs. Reckman Bessop said to me, This dog offered himself to your dad. Maybe his plumbercy, and now they'll both look at the night together. I said to Reckman Bessop, Here's my dad dead, and this dog, and that babby at Witter's Dunk, on all on the same day. Be there a connection? He said, Why don't you stop asking me that? What I connect, it shows I ain't no tell woman, nor I don't know nothing about lips nor signs. I said, That's as may be, but you're standing here and seeing what happened, plus you've been at Witter's Dump this morning. He thought on it a little then. A sour man, but couldn't help getting a little interested. He said, I won't try no tell, but you can tell your own self. Everyone knows if you get flipful things together, you take the farthest out one for the n indicator. What's the farthest out one of you three, w one of the three, you've name it? I said, the dog? He said, what's a dog? It's something you can't get close to. They keep their farness, no, you can't trap them neither. They're too clever. Plus, they're a danger. They will eat you if they catch you on some, and they go mad at full of the moon. So here you've got a far thing come close, and a danger thing as couldn't be trapped offers itself. How old might you be? I said, I just come twelve at full of the moon. He said, Here's an old wore out leader took by a boy. What ain't a boy no more? He's comes twelve in a man. You hearing any tell? I said, 
the far come close took by a little come big? He said, you said it, I didn't. I don't say no farther. You best tell your own self on from there. No use asking other people. They don't know no more than you do. Now your dad's gone. You will be connection man at how fence people will be asking you instead of you asking them. You best start pulling things together for yourself. You ain't a kid no more. When we move it on, the dogs, they slumped off back to burnt ours, dead town. It would like they only come out that day for that one thing. Smoke coming out and bent ours from the outpost there were always heavies there on rota from the round. Every day we gone the same way to and from, and every day we seen that smoke, nor I never give it no thought. This day, though, everything begun to look different, like I've never seen it before. You know that kind of placey kid have sometimes? It's a funny face paint on a flat piece of wood, and there's two holes to roll the eyes into. Clay ball eyes, and you slant the face one way and the other till they roll in to the holes. Well, this day it seemed like the world begun to roll. The world begun to seem like one big crazy eye and rolling. I were a furt in my roll right off the face into spear. Looking at that smoke coming up in the dead town, and my mind still running on the dogs. There been the dead towns all them years. Ram outposts in one part of them, and dogs holt up in other parts. And all them years you heard stories of dog people. People with dog heads, and dogs with people's heads. Some said, come full of the moon, they all run together in the black pack. Dogs and dog people together. The rap didn't allow no one in the dead towns. But when I'd been little, they used to sly in whenever we got the chance and kids enough for crowd. Trying if we could see dog people. Fork stone it been before we lift it near Bantars. We never seen nothing, only the heavies, and they always seen us off crying or larfing. You couldn't quite say what it were or what it weren't. My dad used to say, all that about the dog people were just so much cow shit. He said he would give odds it were political and no dog's heads to it at all. Well, this ain't the place to say no more about it. I will tell that part when I come to it. I've only wrote this down here because my mind been running on it that day, and if it had run farther, I must have known it more. There ain't that many surprises in life if you take notice of everything. Every time will have its happenings out and every place the same. Whatever eats must shit. We got back to fence, and then the death whale gone for Bruder Walker. We done comping station then. Reckman Bessop said, One of yours is dead with us. I have it on me. Will you take it off me? I said, Yes, I will take it off. I took the iron off his back then. That were the only iron I've ever seen out of all them years jobbing at Witter's Dump. Five ten weights of iron for Bruder Walker. My dad, he were 33 when he died. My mum, she died of the coughing sickness when I were five. That's what I've been writing down here. It happened when I've been with How Fence. On the bundle downs near the river Sour, about four foggers north and east of Benters, dead town and about five farther south and west of Cambridge.